Hey everybody, Shoebox Legends here. Thanks for joining me for another video today. Going to look at some cheap pickups that came in the mail, but um, before we get to that, wanted to talk a little bit about a Sport Lots fail uh, that occurred to me over the course of uh, the last couple of weeks. So I, I spend a lot of time praising Sport Lots here on the channel and showing some of the discounted cardboard that I'm able to pick up on the site. And I stand by that. It's still a site that I use regularly and think is, is an amazing place to get really good deals on cheap cards. And I will continue to bring my business to them. Um, but I did have an experience that wasn't so great recently. So the big, the big rub with Sport Lots is that most of the time, unless the seller goes out of their way to scan a card and attach the photo to the listing, you're usually buying these cards sight unseen. Um, unlike a ComC, which, you know, takes all the cards in from the sellers, scans them, and posts them on their behalf. Sport Lots is just collectors like you and me listing their cards for sale. And if they don't take the time to take a scan, which is not mandatory, then you're just buying the cards sight unseen. Now, this doesn't bother me because I've had very few bad experiences over time, but I did have one recently. So I bought an Austin Matthews Opeachy Platinum Rainbow Rookie Card off of Sport Lots. So he his rookies are in the 2016 set. Um, it was a rainbow parallel, so it would be from the same set and the same parallel as this Connor McDavid that I showed recently. And as a matter of fact, it was actually the same seller that I bought this McDavid from. Now, when I got this McDavid card, it was one of my steals of the year. He charged me $5.95 for this second year rainbow McDavid, which is probably a you know 50 to $75 card right now anyway. Uh, with room to grow. So I'm thinking, you know what? I had good luck with this guy the first time around. The Matthews card was considerably more expensive, but keep in mind, this is his rookie year. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a rainbow parallel, just like the last one. So in my mind, I thought I was getting a steal at $25. Now that's a lot for me to lay out for a card on sport lots without seeing a visual. But given that I had good luck with this seller the first time around, I went for it. So I'm expecting essentially this same card in the mail, um, except with Austin Matthews pictured and a little red rookie icon along the side. So first problem, the card doesn't show up. Um, you know, I'm waiting very patiently because I understand there are USPS delays, but go two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, still no card. So finally, I've never had this problem before on Sport Lots, so I honestly didn't know what to do. But I looked it up. There was a way to send a message to the seller before filing any negative feedback or asking for a refund. So that seemed like the right thing to do. So I messaged the seller. He got back to me, to his credit, within a day, said he's been having some health problems, hasn't been able to send my card, but he's really sorry for the delay. My message reminded him, and he got it out the door that day. Fine, no big deal. I'm an easygoing person. I thanked him for his time and for sending me the card. Still very hopeful at this time that I got the steal of a century on a uh, Austin Matthews Rainbow Foil rookie. Uh, or uh, you know, But that didn't happen. So... Finally, the card shows up only about two or three days after he messaged me, um, and this is what came in the mail. So th this is not the card uh, that, that I was expecting. Um, first of all, this is the retro parallel, not the base card, which is what it was listed as. And secondly, this is not rainbow. Um, you can tell, you know, the rainbow are essentially like a Topps Chrome refractor. This is a flat, you know, foil finish. This is a base card. Um, so reached out to the seller and just kind of let him know in a nice way. Hey, appreciate you sending me that, but it's not really what I you know, was expecting or paid for. He got back to me to his credit within minutes, issued me a full refund uh, to my PayPal account, plus a few bucks so that I could send the mistaken Matthews card back to him. And so all's well that ends well. I don't have the card, which is unfortunate because that would have been an amazing price on that card. But at the end of the day, uh, the buyer protection on sport lots worked. The seller was very agreeable. He admitted that he just listed this incorrectly because he's not very knowledgeable about hockey cards, uh, which I fully believe after he sold me this Connor McDavid for five bucks. Um, so no harm, no foul. I obviously didn't give him any grief. Uh, appreciated that he was willing to send me a refund and uh, we'll move on. And maybe someday I will get the uh, rainbow Austin Matthews in my collection after all. But again, just want to be fair and balanced and uh, talk about an experience that I had that shows that it's not all sunshine and roses on sport lots, but uh, still worth the, the roll of the dice in my opinion. 
And now let's get on to a few cheap hockey cards that I picked up over the last few weeks. And uh, I'm just really feeling the hockey lately. Um, the deals that are out there on some of these players are just too good to be true. Here's an example. Um, this is from Upper Deck MVP. Leon Dreisaitl. This is shiny as hell. Die cut and serial numbered out of 250. You can see here. I know MVP is like a you know, lower to mid-tier release. That's not very desirable, but I'd, I'd imagine this parallel is pretty desirable. Arguably the best player in the league, one of them anyway. And I was the lone bidder on this on eBay and took that home for the opening bid of 99 cents. So less than a dollar, obviously a little bit of shipping added on there, but pretty incredible to be pulling these cards home at these prices. And as further evidence of that, I've talked about these before as kind of being poor man's precious metal gems, but I'm continuing to love these purple spectrum parallels out of the Metal Universe release from Upper Deck. So I was fortunate enough to grab the Leon Dreisaitl All-Star parallel. These are numbered to 199 on the back. Um, if you can believe it, this one cost me all of uh, $6 with free shipping. Hard to turn that down. Look at the shine. Love it. And then because I got his all-star card, I was in the market for the base card. And pardon this top loader and scotch tape. I've obviously just still got this one in the top loader that it arrived in. But I'll be scanning this and uh, putting it in proper protection after the video. But grabbed his base card as well. And if you thought the all-star subset card was a good deal at $6... This base card I won via auction on eBay for $2.25. Uh, I'm sorry, but that is like borderline criminal uh, for a player of Dreisaitl's talent level. Um, the three cards you see here, all serial numbered, um, grand total of like less than 10 bucks to add those to the Dreisaitl PC. So really happy about that. Um, that's all I have for Leon Dreisaitl for this episode, but I do have some more shiny. So uh, in the same vein as, you know, going after Dreisaitl, there are certainly other players that I would look to pick up their Purple Spectrum parallels as well. Uh, one of those guys is someone who's actually admittedly having a very rough season, uh, both his team and him as an individual, but I still am intrigued by this guy as a player, Matt Barzal of the New York Islanders. And uh, as with Dreisaitl, picked up his base card, which you see here. And then also his all-star subset, both in purple spectrum. So I think this guy still has a promising future ahead. He's been a very good player in the league in his limited time and uh, was watching these. And the seller reached out to me with a proactive offer of $3 for the base card, $2 for the all-star with free shipping on the whole package. So for a five spot, got the uh, complete Matt Barzel run out of... Uh, Metal Universe, as far as Purple Spectrum goes. Can't beat that. Here is a canvas insert that I got off of Sport Lots. Love this one. The great Yarmir Yager, who, of course, is the next name on the list for Alex Ovechkin to try to surpass in terms of his goal-scoring total. So presently, Yager is number three in NHL history and career goals, which is impressive given that he missed some time playing overseas. Um, and I, I do think Alex will pass him, if not this season, early next. But nonetheless, one of the great goal scorers of his generation and a player who I enjoy collecting. And I've got two more here. So we've got our super shiny Whalers card. I've shown a lot of Panini hockey from the early 2010s when they had a license. And today's is another example. Check out this select Brendan Shanahan. This is the silver prism parallel of his select card. This is the lone... Standalone select hockey set um, put out in the same year as the lone standalone prism hockey set. And, uh, you know, it's very easy to see why I wanted this one for the Hartford Whalers collection. Uh, funny story about this. I actually had a copy of this years ago and I gave it away to someone because it was when I was relatively new to collecting and I didn't realize the difference between the base card and the silver parallel. And sadly, I sent away the silver to somebody who kept the base, realized a couple of years later when it was a lot less shiny than I remembered that I had given it away. So I always had that one on my radar since to reacquire and uh, fortunately found one on Sport Lots recently for $2. So 
solid addition there to the Whalers PC. And then we're going to close out with one that is a little bit more expensive than these, um, but still cheap and a card that I'm a big believer in going forward. So I was able to pick this up on eBay. This is Connor McDavid's second year canvas parallel or insert, I guess it would be, uh, from 2016 Upper Deck. So this is the first, you know, non-Young Guns canvas um, that's that exists for McDavid. Um, we take a look at the back here. There's a nice image of him waving to the crowd in his oiler sweater, um, but it's all about the front. I love the multiple exposure technique here that kind of harkens back to the early 90s and, and the inception of Upper Deck. They did these in, you know, multiple sports, and I can think of a lot of meaningful cards or memorable cards from my childhood that featured this multiple exposure technique. And, of course, here it does a good job of sort of conveying the speed uh, that McDavid is known for. He's absolutely a special talent on skates, and it kind of comes across on this card. I, I think it's a significant card just being his first non-Young Guns canvas and him being a player that's going to do really, really special things in the league for many years to come and potentially go down as one of the greatest of all time. Um, I don't think I'm overstating anything and saying that. It's still early, but we'll see. Um, that card you can still find. I think it is a sneaky good buy. You can still find that card for under $20 shipped to your door. This copy here cost me about $15. Even with shipping and tax, I came in at under $20. I am a buyer on that card at that price all day long. Um, I think that's a card that's going to be worth a whole lot more than $15 in the future. So even though I already had a copy of it, I believe, waiting for me in my most recent Com C shipment, just couldn't resist the opportunity to add one even faster via eBay, snatch that up. And again, if I see more of those in the $10, $12, $15 range, I'm going to buy every one that I see uh, because I think that's a huge card down the line. So that is all I have. Thank you for sticking around today to listen to my uh, sport lot woes and uh, also check out some cool new hockey cards. I hope you enjoyed uh, what we looked at here and uh, I will certainly be back in the very near future with some more sports card content. Until then, take care everybody.